all right everyone a uh, very good morning very good evening uh let's uh, start with this today's session uh, pretty much uh, most of uh, you guys are like waited for this the rack to rack dr setup so what i'm going to trying to do here in this session uh, i have two servers node 1 node 2 that's a two node rack my production database is vara 12c and then i'm going to build a standby database for this production database rack standby with the uh, two instances which are running under oracle node 1 oracle node 2 these are the two node rack instance each other so in simple words uh, many people will take it as a challenge like you know building data guard uh, but that is not that critical so let's see here like what i'm trying to show here in this diagram these are my two node rack here my node 1 and then node 2 these are my two node rack so and then i i want to build my two node standby for that and then i can say anything like n1 or i can say node 1 or i can just take the same name oracle node 1 and oracle node 2 oracle node 1 is first node in my standby side and oracle node 2 is second node so like there are multiple approach to build your standby database so in my case here i have orcl production database like orcl instance 1 orcl instance 2 so these two instance together will make my uh the production database this is my production database and then i'm trying to build rack standby instance 1 and node 1 here and then rack standby instance 2 and this node 2 so this is my standby database so how we are going to build this standby instance the one way you can directly build from primary to standby without any backup you no need to go you no need to have any production database backup directly build the standby database directly pulling your production database that is called active database duplication and the second way is take this production database backup right these are your production database backups and then with the help of this production database backups you can restore your standby database so again with the help of this production database backup you have two option to restore option 1 using restore method option 2 using rman duplicate method so any one of that you can go with the option 1 using just restore method and option 2 using your rman duplicate method so once you have this backup you can use any one of these option option 1 or option 2 you can restore your uh, your standby database here right so i can brief on all these three method let's see how these are my production database production node 1 and production node 2 and then these which are in red color are my product uh, standby databases standby instance standby server 1 and then standby server 2 right now on standby server is purely empty uh, i think it's running over here right so if anybody has any questions in the meantime you always post it in our chat box here so that you know i can take it up and then i can answer that right and then let's connect here on the primary side i can quickly verify couple of things here i can just bring my notepad here uh on the primary side we already verified uh my primary instance one which is my rack 12c instance one which is up and running and the same thing on the standby uh, on the second node uh instance two rack 12c instance two which is running up and running here and then i can quickly set the environment to my any one of the node node one or node two i'm going to set it to rack 12c and node one I can log into Oracle user and I can set the environment again. Rack 12c instance one, right? And then 
after that you can check your sru ctl status your database status rack 12c instance one instance two both are running on node one and node two and in fact you can do for sru ctl config as well so sru ctl as an ctl config database hyphen d rack 12c uh, running under the 12c oracle home using this oracle owner your sp file is inside this group and your password file is inside your disk group here and then which has instance one instance two running on node one and node two right so if you do same command on the node two the results are same dot or inv so rack 12c and then if i run the same command sructl status because it's a rack database so if you run from any cluster node the results are same instance one instance two running on node one and node two right so that's about your environmental uh, settings what you are right now having it here right and then now i can quickly go to my node one uh, whatever i'm doing it on only on the production side only on the production i'm not at all touching on my standby side here First thing is I can verify both the instance and my database configuration, my Oracle home, my SP file and password file, everything is set here on the primary side. Now I'm going to verify my listeners and TNS file on the primary side. I'll go into Oracle home network admin. And then I can pretty much check for my listeners here. And then TNS. First, I'm going to check for TNS. You just observe what I kept under TNS files here. So this is my TNS file here. So TNS files contains uh, my database name and my instance name one and instance name two. And if you closely observe these three differences here, the database name, which is pointing to my scan here, node scan with the port 1521. And my instance one and instance two of my primary database both are running to node one VIP, node two VIP, respective to that, the custom port 1522. Right, so that's a simple difference between the scan versus your VIP. So when you're using a scan name, your TNS is pointing to scan, then the port is 1521 where your scan is running. And your instance one and instance two, both are pointing to your node one and node two VIP with that custom port. So these three entries for your production database, and followed by, I have another three entries for my standby database. So rack standby one. So this for my standby. And then by standby instance one and standby instance two. So again, if you observe these three entries here, so the rack standby, which is pointing to ORCL scan, that is my standby scan, which is on 1521 and my rack standby instance one and instance two, both are pointing to node one VIP, node two VIP with the custom port, right? So that's how you need to configure on the primary side. So both your three entries for your production database and three entries for your standby database. Six entries, you should have it in your TNS file. Same thing if I go to second node in my production server and then same thing, cat TNS name data aura. Right, so again, same thing, rack 12C, rack 12C1, rack 12C2, three instance, three entries for my production database, and then again, three entries for my standby database. Again, one more, I'm gonna repeat, your database name should be pointing to scan, and the instance should be pointing to the respective VIP, and then that, if you're using a custom port, you can use a custom port. Right, so these three, three six entries under node two as well, that's your, Second check what you're going to do it here. That's what I listed out here in this particular log. Right, once you verify your TNS entries on node one and node two, now I can verify my listeners on node one and node two, listener.vara. Right, so listener.vara, listener, rack 12C, which is running under node one VIP with port 1522. Right, so that's your custom listener, what you defined. And that's where you know your listener uh, instance one and instance two, which will be pointing to node one and node two VIP with 1522, so that your listener will be running under that particular custom port 1522. So same thing on the node two as well, cat listener.vara. So I can see listener underscore rack 12C, 
and then which is running under node 2 VIP with a custom port. Right, so that's your uh, second check. One is like your instance check, third is your TNS check, and fourth one is your listener check. And then again, I can do PSFNEF grep TNS, and I can see my listener underscore rack 12C, which is up and running on node two. If I run the same command on node one, node one also, you can see listener underscore rack 12C, which is up and running. So if your listener is down, so you can make it like you can start it. So along with that, there are so many listeners here. I think uh, if you are not uh, uh, learned about track and obviously these listeners will get confused. You know, there's an ASM net listener for your Plex cluster, your uh, MGMT listener for your MGMT database and the listener that's a grid listener default comes with your cluster and your scan two and three running on node one and remaining scan one is running under node two because scan will be distributed across your cluster nodes. And again, on the second node also, you have your listener and your ASM net listener. So that's a, I covered this listener topics in my channel with, a, you know, three, four sessions on the listener. So if you missed out, you can always refer them. Right, so your listener is up and running, your database listener on both the nodes, right? So this is your listener. So you can verify using LSN or CTL uh, status listener. I'm just going to do this on node one. So LSNR CTL listener. So that's your listener underscore rack will see, which is up and running, which is pointing to your instance too. And then the service name is rack will see. So if I run the same thing on node one, so instance, instance name is here, rack will see one and rack will see your service name. So your listener is up and running and then it is service or listening. That's perfectly fine on node one and node two. Right, and then you don't need to worry for the other listeners, like your grid listeners. So what I'm talking is only purely my database side. If I go to my grid listeners and check it out, there are so many things, but we're not using grid listener here. This is my custom listener, which is configured under this particular Oracle home. If you're using uh, some uh, custom listener on the grid home, so you have to go ahead and check in that particular grid home listener files. Right, if I go here on the grid home and then check for the listener, so you can see so many entries over there. So that is like none of our business. We're not gonna touch my grid listener. So for example, I can show you that one here. Slash it is or a tab. And then if I go to my grid home, this is my grid home, grid home network admin, grid home network admin. So in that grid home network admin also you have a listener. So that's your grid side. So we're not gonna to touch anything. So whatever I talked about that scan, my management listener and my, the grid listener, everything will run from your grid home. So we're not gonna worry about that grid listener. So the same thing will be there inside your second node as well. Let's say if I do cat listener, so here also the same thing. So your management listener, your ASM net listener, your scan listener, everything will be running from your grid home. So we're not gonna worry about grid listener as of now. Right, so let's go further. Uh, now I can check uh, my, whatever this particular listener, listener underscore rack policy, which is configured, which is registered with my cluster or not. For that, I need to set the environment to ASM plus ASM one. So CRS CTL stat resource hyphen T, the single command CRS CTL stat resource hyphen T. The moment you run it, I'll go all the way up here. And then my listener here listener underscore rack 12c dot lsnr so your listener this is a custom listener which is running under that oracle home under the port 1522 and which is registered with your cluster that's where in your crs it has stat resource output you can see that that entry over here again this is a cluster command you can run it from any node and then you're going to get the same result so if i run the same command from node 2 by setting the environment to asm if I run the CR, same command, CRCTL stat resource, CRCTL stat resource hyphen T. So I can see my listener underscore rack 12C, which is registered with my cluster. If you don't register with your cluster, so you have to manually shut down and stop your cluster using LSNR CTL stop listener, start listener. And if you register with your cluster, your cluster will take care of that, right? So that's a other thing I can verify on the production side. 
So once I verify my production listener, so this is how you need to add that listener. If it is not registered with your uh, cluster, so what you can do, SRUC tell add listener, hyphen L, listener name, port, and your Oracle home. So you're gonna add your listener. Uh, you can do it from node one or node two, doesn't matter. Once you add it at cluster level, that's it. So you can run this SRUC tell start listener. It's gonna start it on both nodes. You can use this SRUC tell to stop, start, and manage your listener. Once you add your listener to cluster, so LSNCTL also can work and your SRCTL also will work. So if I run this command now, you can see the listener status is up and running on both the nodes. So rack 12C1, I can set the environment back to my database. If I do this one, SRCTL status listener, listener name, it says running on node one and node two. And if you want a detailed output, you can do LSNCTL status. Right, so that's gonna give you that listener status here. Same thing on node two as well, dot or INV, rack 12C2. And if I run this same command, SRCTL status, right, you can say which is running under node one and two, but if you want a detailed output, you can do this one. LSNRCTL status listener, it wanna see your service name and database name up and running here. Right, so that's about listener. And then once you run your, your listener, into sorry uh, i just give an example for 19c and 12c so purely we are talking about here 12c1 commands are same so once you register you run your listener in custom port 1522 make sure that inside your database you have your local and so listener parameters set to uh, respective port number and respective vip and each of these cluster instances if i go on my node one and if i do show parameter listener so my listener on node one is already set to my node one vip with port 1522 if i go on node two and then if i run the same command show parameter listener and again on node two also my listener is set to node two VIP and then port 1522. So my listener is already set on my database level. So if it is not set, you can run this command alter system set local listener on both the node one and node two. And then uh, they're gonna start listing under that particular port. Right, so that's a that's your local listener. So only we need to set this local listener parameter. Once you run your database instances or the listeners is some custom port other than 1521. If it's running under 1521, then no need to set this local listener parameter. Default, your PMON or LREL service will listen under or register your database with the 1521 port. So if you're using custom port, then only you can use these commands, otherwise no need to use that. Right, that's a other checks what you're gonna do it. Now coming to my TNS check. So we have all verified listeners, TNS, and my listeners are up and running and registered with my cluster. Everything is perfectly fine on my production side. So now I can quickly verify TNS ping on my node one. TNS ping I'll do rack 12C. I remember this will be pointing to your scan. If you see here, it will be pointing to your scan, right? You can note scan and then under port 1521. So that is responding properly fine. If I go with the two second instance, second instance is like rack 12C instance one, which is pointing to node one VIP with 1522. If I do with the second instance here, so my rack 12C instance two, which is running under node two VIP with port 1522, all are responding properly fine here. Same thing on node two as well. So I'm just gonna do TNS ping of my database name here, right? So everything will be perfectly fine. And instance one, sorry, C1, instance one, which is perfectly responding. My instance two, that also perfectly responding fine. So now I'm gonna verify my password, password file, whatever we have it on the disk group, which is perfectly working fine between node one and node two. So I can connect to my rack 12C as a CDB sys password, rack 12C as a CDBA. So on node one, I'm able to connect. And then now I'll make, just add instance one here. So I'm able to connect. And then I'm gonna add instance two. Right, so I'm able to connect all the three uh, connections. 
to my primary side from node one. So same thing I'll do it on the node two as well. So I'm able to connect, right? So, and then exit, go with the instance one. So I'm able to connect, go with the instance two. Right, so I'm able to connect. So that's good. So your password file is working fine on both the node one and node two in your production side. So that's a verification you have to do it. Right, this is the output I already captured here. After this session, I'm gonna save this document. Right, so once that is done, so next step is we verified password file is working fine. So now I need to copy that password file and then transfer it to my standby side because that's one of the mandatory tasks because without password file, we will not be able to oh, configure your standby database. So SLCTL config is the one, it's gonna get you the password file location on any one node, you can do it on node one or node two. The moment I do SLCTL config database, and then I can see my SP file and password file. This is my password file. That's the one thing, right? And the second thing is you can connect to your ASM CMD command line and you can do this DB nickname and get the password. Get password PW get is to get your password file. So I can connect to my ASM dot or INV plus ASM one, ASM CMD. So you can run this command PW get or DB unique name. So that's gonna give you a password file location. So it's gonna give some, uh, let's set here, uh, rack 12 C instance one, ASNCMD, right? And then if I do PW get, right? So I can I can get the same password file, whatever I got using your SLCTL config database. So I'm gonna get the same thing, data, rack 12 C password, and then your password file. So same thing, data, rack 12 C password, and then password file. So you got your password file. So I can use PW copy, and then I can copy this particular disk group, my password file to my local directory. So I can simply run this command. Right, so copying your disk group, this password file, which is under disk group, to your local file here. So if I exit, LL. Right, so I got my password here, password file, and then I can copy this password file to my standby server. So once you get your password file, so I can use SCP, copy this password file to my uh, standby server one and standby server two. So if I go here, I already copied that password file on both the nodes, LL. Right, you can see on node one and then node two, so you have your password file on both the nodes. So your commands are here, SCP, the password file to node one and node two. So you have to copy that one on both nodes. I copied here already, yesterday I copied that one. So once your password file you copied, so now I'm going to do some of the mandatory parameter settings on my production set. These are very, very important. Whatever I'm gonna show you now here, these are like very, very important and mandatory parameter. You need to set it on the production side. Without this parameter, you cannot configure your standby. So one is your archive log. Your database should be in archive log mode and your database fourth logging should be enabled. That's the one thing. So I'm just gonna connect here. SQL plus SSTBA. So one is archive log list, which is gonna tell you whether your database is in archive log mode or not. Right, so my your database is in archive log mode, which is enabled. So database is up and running, so that's fine. And then check your force logging and database level force logging is enabled. If not, you can do alter database force logging. The command is same, alter, simple command, alter database force logging. So these are like two mandatory things you have to check it out and followed by your redo logs. Verify your redo logs here. Right, so your read logs, you have group one, group two, and group three, and group four. You have four read log groups, and then group one and two pointing to your instance one here, node one, production database, and group three and group four are pointing to your instance two, node two, second node instance. This, and again, if you see group one has a two threads. One is like under Rico, and one is under data, and then group, Two also has one under data and one under record. This is called multiplexing, right? 
so you can have either one thread or the through thread doesn't matter like you know each group has two two threads one is under data disk group and one is under record disk group like you know you can see group one two threads and group two also having two threads and group three also having two thread and group four also having two threads one under data and one under record so two are like current status and two are like active status so you can have multiple disk groups multiple sorry uh, you already log groups right that's one thing and then verify your standby read logs Right, so these are your standby read logs. Uh, you have group one to four, that is your online read logs, and you have group five, six, seven, eight, nine are your standby read logs, which I already created. So command to create your standby read logs are the here like alter database add standby log file thread one. So you can have thread one, uh, five, thread two. You can have like thread one, thread two, and then you can have your thread to here, thread to here. And again, you can have three, three, one, like one extra read log group, your standby read log group, you're gonna have it here. So you can have thread one, read log group five, six, and seven. And then you can go with the eight, nine, and then 10. So you can have one, one extra thread for each of them. So you can either go with the same uh, this group name, or like if you have the different disk group for your standby root logs, you can go out and then define it. So it's just gonna match your existing online root logs, right? So again, there's a question here on the chart. What's the purpose of your standby root logs when you're gonna do with your uh, real-time apply, right? So when you have your production database and standby database, and then you are gonna apply that real-time apply. When you're gonna go with the real-time apply, your standby read logs are very, very important. So real-time apply means that any transactions are going to happen on the production side. It's gonna start writing into your uh, production database read logs. At the same time, it's gonna start writing into your standby read logs. So standby read logs are useful when you have a real-time apply. When you don't have a real-time apply, so your standby read logs are not needed. Right, so you can go ahead and then create your standby read logs. And uh, once you have your standby read logs, that's well and good. Otherwise, what happened like, uh, do, I have that, do I have that slide? Give me a second. Uh, probably I can give you more clarity on that. Uh, standby, standby, standby. Okay, here, this slide. Uh, what happens here? Once you have standby read logs, for example, whatever the transactions are happening at your primary side, so your Eldridge background process is going to transfer it to your RFS and then RFS is going to write into your standby read logs here. And then log data is going to write into your standby online read log here. So your production read logs and standby read logs are going to update at the same time. There's a zero data loss here. When you configure with the standby read logs, there's a zero data loss. So whatever the transactions are happening at your primary side, at the same time, your standby side also, the transactions will be happening. So that's the use case of your standby read log. If you don't have a standby read log, what happens? So the, the your configuration is gonna be like, look different here. Like your configuration is going to be like this. So you're gonna, first you're gonna generate your log data, you're gonna write into online read log. So online read log is going to generate your archive read log here on the, on the primary side. This archive log will be shifted to your, uh, your DR and then RFS will directly generate your archive read log here and then gonna apply it here. So this command, this particular standard read logs are missed here. So it's a async. This is called async. So it's not a synchronous. First archive is going to generate here on the primary side, and later it's going to transfer it to your standby side, and then it's going to apply it on the DR side. So real time is not possible here. So once the transactions are happened on the primary side, later the transactions is going to happen on the DR side. So that's the use case of uh, standby read logs. If you have a standby read logs, so you can directly go with the synchronous mode of transfer, like you know directly primary database will transfer that the transactions directly or standby. And then at the same time, the transactions are going to write it, your log Eldridge process will register or create your online read log. Your RFS process will create your standby read log. So it's all synchronous. There is no data loss here. That's the use case of your standby read logs. Right, that's about uh, standby read log, why we can create. Otherwise, if you're not using uh, real-time apply, then ignore the standby read logs. Right, so 
Uh, next is very, very important parameter, your DB nickname on the primary side. So Ractol C. And then your log archive config. So log archive config should point to your production database name and standby database name. Basically, this production service and the standby service because that's going to be same as your unique name. Right. So that's your log archive config. And then log archive destination one is local FRI location. So if I do log archive destination, that will be local FRI location, that which is not set. Default it will be local FRI location. And then log archive destination state one will be default enabled. You can see log archive destination one is default enabled. That will be like default one. And then log archive destination two is the one which will be pointing to your standby. So if I do log archive destination two, which will be like pointing to your standby and then log archive destination state, or uh, right now it is in enabled, I can disable it. So make sure that when you are building your standby database, you can first defer your log archive destination state to. So you can use this command uh, defer log archive destination state to defer and then you can build your standby. Later, once you build your standby, you can enable that one, right? So this is different now. So these are like very important parameter. One is log archive config. So let's go here. One is uh, log archive config should point to your primary and standby, right? And then your destination one, state one will be for your FRA and then state two will be for your uh, standby. Right. So these are like very, very mandatory parameters. Right. Once that is done, your standby file management is auto. So once you set it, once you set it to auto, that will be like automatically it will gonna uh, create any file if you create on the primary side. Standby file management is set to auto. Whatever the file you're gonna create it on the primary side, automatically it's gonna create it on the standby side. Whenever you add a new data file, automatically it's gonna create a new data file on the standby side. If you set your standby file management to auto. Otherwise, you have to manually create it. So your file server and file client. So that will be like opposite each other. Your file client will be the database name itself. File server should be opposite your opposite server uh, database name. So file client on the production side, it will be production database name. File server should be my standby server. So in the standby side, it will be opposite. It will be reverse. And DB file name convert and your DB file name convert, whatever data, rack will see, data standby, and your log file name convert, whatever like data rack will see, convert it to data rack standby, whatever the Rico rack will see, convert it to Rico rack standby. So that is like converting your production database to standby database. So that's your DB file name and log file. So these are like very mandatory or important parameter you need to set it. Otherwise, your DR build is going to fail. Right, so these are the commands I listed it out. How we're going to check that? Alter system set, DG config, archive destination state two, and file management is auto. Your file server, file client, and your DB log file name convert, DB file name convert. Right, so these are the output I just listed out here. So now, uh, as I said, two approaches. One is like without backup, directly take a connection and the other one is all right let's go here other one is with the backup so we're going to take uh, sorry this is your second approach ah all right so this is your second approach so in this case you are you need a your what I say, like you need a backup this year without backup uh, the second option is not possible this is like active database. Uh, I can say active database duplication. And here it's a backup based. So in this backup paste, again, as I said, I have a option one and then I have a option two, right? So option one with the using a restore command and then option two with the Rman duplicate command, right? So you can use the restore command and you can use the Rman duplicate command, both are fine. 
So we can see this active database duplication and also we can discuss this option one and option two here. So now I'm gonna take the backup of my production database. So take a primary database backup here, connect to your primary database and then run this, allocate channel one, channel two, cross check backup, cross check RK log all, delete no prompt, compressed backup. So these are like just uh, pre-checks here. So actual command is here, backup by the backup set, incremental level zero. I'm gonna take a backup. If you already have your level zero, level one, you can use this uh, old backups. So I'm gonna take my database backup. I'm gonna take my archaeolog backup. And then I'm gonna take SP file backup. I'm gonna take a backup current control file for my, this one. And then there's one more uh, standby control file. I need to include that here. Let's include that one here. Uh, that's very, very important. When you are building your standby, you have to take a standby control file. So this is your standby control file here. Where is that one here? Backup, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to include it here. Okay, here, let's include it here. Backup, device type as a disk, format, use your own backup, rack standby control file. So using your current control file for standby. So very, very important. You have to take a current control file for standby in order to build your standby database. So I'm just gonna run this command here. Right, so U01 backup. So these are my old backups. I'm gonna delete here. Everything is deleted. Just gonna run this command now. Rman target slash run this command here. Right, so this is gonna take uh, one or two minutes. So meantime, we can take a couple of questions on the chart here. Uh, how to check standby database status is sync, uh, sync, redo, apply, archive apply. It's all depend upon your configuration here. Whatever the configuration, what you defined here, that will that will tell you what kind of a, a mode you are running. Right, so alter, alter system, log archive, destination, service name, and then after service name, sync, you're gonna mention R, you're gonna mention a sync, right? So that's a sync and a sync. So that what you're gonna see. The moment you do sync, that will be your real time apply. So the moment you mention a sync, that will be your RK log apply. So your log RK destination state two will tell you whether you're running with a sync or a sync mode. So this is the only way you can identify whether it's running sync or a sync. Right, yeah, uh, there's other questions. Should we have a same redo log size? Obviously you should have a same redo log size on your both primary and standby. Both your online redo log and standby redo log should have a, a same redo log size. And then in the primary side, you have four redo logs and the standby side, you should have five redo logs. Why? Because uh, in case of uh, production database crash happens, so you were, at least you should have one redundant, one extra copy, one extra read log file on the standby side in order to sustain your transaction information. So that's the reason you should have one extra read log. So again, it's not mandatory, but if you have it in case of, if your DR is little slow, so you should, you should make use of the other extra read logs on the standby side. Uh, in case of two node cluster with the primary and standalone database, how many groups should we create on the standby? So this is depend how busy your database is. If your database is doing a lot of transactions, a lot of DML operations, and you try to create multiple data log groups based upon that, you, you, you can see that error message. Uh, what happened? There is a device type command. Type is not so okay, anyway. That's not uh, over here. Like we got all the uh, okay, we got our backup, we got our archaeolog backup, data file backup, and we got our uh, again archaeolog backup, we got SP file backup, we got current control file backup. So I think this last command was failed. So I'm just going to include that one backup device type format backup current control file. So I'm just going to take this one. Right, so that's your standby control file is ready. So I'll just exit. 
and then I can copy all these backups. SCP. I'm just going to copy into my uh, target site. So that will be here. Like SCP command is here. After the backup, you can use SCP and your target server. SCP star, I'm going to copy into target server here. So let's go ahead and then check U01 backup. I'm just going to remove this old backups on the target side. Done. So I can just copy it now. Right. So the backups are coming here now. So a couple of questions again. Let's take it here. Uh, active DD same as active database. No, that is active database duplication. What I'm talking about here. Active database duplication is without backup. You're gonna build your standby database. That's a RMAN active database duplication. So active data guard is separate license. You have to find it out. You have to get it from Oracle. Uh, right, and then a couple of questions here. Can we create a standby from standby? Uh, can we create a standby from standby? So as long as you have backup, you have backup from the primary side or standby side, we can have, we can go ahead and create the standby. So, but like right now, this is a setup here, and then you can create one more standby by connecting to your primary or like from the standby, you have your backups here, and then you can configure your standby, but this standby is pointing to this primary. You cannot configure standby for the standby, but with the help of your standby backups, you can configure your standby, but that should point to your primary. Your standby always point to your primary database. Uh, how about rack data guard patching? Rack data guard patching, uh, yeah, again, you have to patch your DR first. And once you patch your DR, you have to patch your production. So always follow. When you want to upgrade your database, first you have to upgrade your standby. Upgrade your standby means start your standby instance in the higher version and then do your database upgrade on the primary side. Patching and upgradations, first you have to do it on the standby side. All right, uh, what happened? So is the copy completed? All right, so copy is completed. It's right, so all the backups are on the standby side here. All right, so that's a copy phase. Once the copy is done. So now, uh, remember we copied password file on node one and node two under temp location. Now I'm gonna copy that password file to my this groups here. So with the instance name, so whatever the password file I copied here, I'm gonna copy it with the instance name and with the database name under DBS location. I think I already copied that on node one. So now I'm gonna do whatever I'm gonna do it now. So that's it, whatever I did on the primary side, that's it, like primary side, I'm not gonna touch anymore now. So now whatever I'm gonna go, whatever I'm gonna do it on the standby side now. So now I'll connect to my standby side and then I'm gonna set the environment to my rack standby instance one. And then this is the first command, like, you know, you're gonna, whatever the password file you copied, so that password file, you're gonna rename it under DBS location here. Right, CD, LL. So I'm just gonna check for this one. I already copied, I already copied this password file. Right, so with the rack standby and with the rack standby instance one. So this is like database name wise, and this is your standby, database instance so instant name and database name both i copied both i renamed it at once that is done so these are like command output what i did mm, and you can do it on the second node as well with the same command like if i go on the second node su oracle dot where i envy rack Rack standby instance two. So go here, LL. I'm going to do this same uh, rack standby instance. And then you can see you have rack standby instance. So second, first instance is not mandatory. So you should have your database name and then the second instance on the node two. Right. So that's a, that's a node two. And now on the standby side, I don't have anything. If I try to check my database status, nothing here because it's a brand new database what we're going to create. So PSI, FNF, grep, smon, 
nothing is running here right so these are like output i just mentioned here right and then obviously like now i need to start building my standby database either using active database duplication or the backup based duplication because i have backup as well as my active database so now on the standby side i'll just uh, make sure that my tns and listeners are properly configured here so i can go into my tns admin location on both the nodes and i can verify my tns and listeners and node 1 so cat listener uh, before that i can do cat tns cat tns so again on the tns name you can if you can observe three entries for my standby standby database standby instance and standby instance 2 and then three entries for my production so six entries on the node 1 and the same thing on the node 2 also cat tns so again six entries here node three entries for my standby side and three entries for my uh, dr side right uh, production side as well as the standby side so with the database name and the instance name all right uh, that's the first thing on the standby side we can verify and the second thing is your listener cat listener dot ora file and node 2 and then on node 1 so once you want one thing if you observe here your listener name listener underscore rack standby which is pointing to your node 1 vip with the port custom port and then this is very interesting so we are going to add my database details static registration so this is called your static registration i'm going to add my standby database service name instance name database name oracle home everything to my listener so that the moment you start your listener automatically your services are registered with your listener that's called static registration here so if i do psfnef grep tns so your listener is up and running here lsnrctl uh, if you try to do this one lsnrctl status your listener name and you can see your listener your instance your service with the unknown status that's called your static registration right so that's what what we did here on node one and node two also cat listener so again like listener static registration here and if i do lsnrct status listener rack to instance with unknown status that's a static registration why we need a static registration because of this active database duplication if you want to do your active database duplication that's static listener is mandatory without static listener you cannot do this active listener active database duplication if you're doing a backup based duplication that static listener is not mandatory you no need of that static listener right that's about uh, static listener why we need and then we started the moment to you start your listener your database instance will be a unknown state because database is not running here still you can see your database details with the listener that's a uh, static listeners right and then the tns details what we added it on both the node one and node two and then you are going to add that listener into your cluster where SRFC tell add listener listener name port and oracle home you're going to add it to a uh, cluster where sorry so if i try to set the environment to plus asm and verify that crsctl stat resource hyphen t and if i go all the way up here your listener underscore rack standby which is up and running on both the nodes so you can check this one listener status dot or inv dot or inv rack rack standby one Where is what's the oracle home here i'll get it oracle home here great so if i check for my listener status it should be up and running on both the nodes so both the node one and node two your listener is up and running right so once that is done your listeners and tns we have to verify it and then once your listeners like this is the command i added here so once you added or registered your listener into cluster that's it the moment you do lsnrc tell listener it should be it should be up and running and the moment you do lsns it status your database should, should be registered with unknown status on both the node one and node two 
right and i then if you do and then other grid listeners doesn't matter i'm not going to worry about the grid listener here same thing goes the scan and your grid listener and your asmnet listeners so all will be running under grid home so we're not worrying about that right so this all i can ignore here i can directly go next step that's a create a dummy init file and then you can start your dummy instance here so i can quickly go here and node one and then this is my dummy instance here. If I do a uh, cat. So this dummy instance has, okay, it doesn't have it here. Um, so what I'm going to do here, dummy instance, I'm just going to put only two uh, parameters here. In it, rack standby, I'm going to create this dummy instance with only two parameters. One is DB name pointing to your production database name and DB nickname, that's your rack standby. Only two parameters on that domain init file. Right, so if I do cat again here. Right, so rack 12C, rack standby. Only two parameters in that domain init file, right? So if you want whatever parameter, you can put SGA, PGA, your control file location and all, of, all those things. Right now, I'm not using all of them. So I'm just gonna put only two of them here now. So because automatically I'll I'll keep it default. So rack standby instance one. So ENB done. So your environment is all set here. Now I'm gonna directly connect to SQL plus SSDB. So it connected to idle instance. I'm gonna start up no mount P file. I'm going to use that dummy P file, whatever I created here, right? With only two parameters, right? I'm going to start using that dummy P file, my standby instance with no mount mode, right? So your instance is started here, great. Once your instance is started, so the, again, the output are here, you can just refer that. So now what I'll do, I'll do the same process what I did in production side, TNS ping, and then connect using that password file and both the node one and node two. So on node one, TNS ping. So I'm able to ping my scan name, okay response and instance one. I just started my instance one here. I'm able to do that one. My instance two, again, I should be able to do the TNS ping because my listener is running. My services are registered with that listener. And the same thing on node two as well. I'm able to do TNS ping of my rack standby. And if I do rack standby one, I'm able to do that one. Rack standby two, I'm able to ping that one as well. So now I'm, if I try to connect to my rack standby database and then it's gonna fail. So if I go to node one, if I try to connect, it's gonna fail that, you know, the request unknown service. So scan is not yet configured. Your database is not yet ready. So it is, it is expected output. You'll not be able to connect. And if you try to connect to rack standby instance one, you should be able to connect because the, the database you just now started in no mount. If I try connecting here, see, I'm able to connect. If I run this command instance name status, your database is just started on node one, right? And if I try to connect the second one, rack standby two, it will be connect to idle instance because on the node two, my instance is not running. It says and connected to idle instance, right? So this is all expected here. The rack DB name, it will fail because scan is not yet configured for the database. And instance one, you will be able to connect because you just started in no mode. And instance two also, you should be able to connect, but that should be idle instance. So same thing if I run it on the other node, node one, again, the error message because scan is not yet configured. And the second one, the instance one, you should be able to connect. Your instance will be in, just started mode, right? So, and then the other one is your instance two. If it should connect to your idle instance because instance two is not started on the node two, right? So it means your TNS is properly configured. Your listener is properly configured. You should be able to do all the pings and able to connect using that password file. That's an indication of this, right? So I just verified output all here. I just uh, captured here yesterday, right? And then now what I'll do, I'm trying to connect to my primary database. From the primary server, I'll try to connect to my standby. And the same thing from the standby, I'll try to connect to my primary. So now I'll go to my primary site here. 
I'll try to do the same thing. TNS ping my rack standby able to do and rack standby instance one from the primary side I'm talking about and rack standby instance two. So I'm able to do ping. And then if I try to connect to rack standby, it will want to fail because scan is not configured for my standby. And if I try to connect to my standby instance one, I should be able to connect because instance one what we started. And if I try to connect to my standby instance two, you should connect to idle instance because we have not started that second instance in my standby from the node one. Same thing you do it from the node two also production node two. So TNS ping your scan able to ping and your standby instance one able to do TNS ping of your standby instance two able to do the TNS ping. And then the scan name will not be able to connect your standby scan name. That's the expected one. And the node one, you should be able to connect. Right, so you're able to connect. And node two, again, you will be able to connect, but it should be idle instance. Right, that's the expected one. So from the primary side, you should be able to connect to your standby side. And the same thing you have to do from the standby side, you, whether you are able to connect to your primary side or not here. From the standby side, whether you are able to connect to standby or not. Again, I'll go to standby side here, node one, able to ping my production database, production database instance one. I'm able to do that again. Okay, zero millisecond. And my production instance two, able to ping. Again, I'll do it from the second node as well. I'm able to ping. Okay, response and instance one. I'm able to ping instance two from the standby. I'm trying to ping my production. So all are working fine from the standby side. So if I want to verify the password, so I should be able to. So I'm able to connect to production database scan and production database instance one. I'm able to connect and production database instance two. I'm able to connect all these three entries. And if I do the same thing from the other node in the standby side, Scan, I'm able to connect production database scan. And again, production database instance one, I'm able to connect. And again, production database instance two, I should be able to connect on both the nodes. Right, so this is how you need to verify from the standby side and from the primary side, how whether you are able to reach or whether you're able to connect or not. So that concludes your TNS is proper, your listener is proper, your password files are proper. Right, so these are like output again here. I just uh, copied and now option one, uh, I can say this is my method one, uh, will stand by using active database. So I think I can say here, instead of this option one, um, what I can say, I can say this is my option two. I can say this is my option two and this is my option three. So I can say this is my option three and then this is my option one. Right, option one is the active database and then option two and three for my backup based. So active database is here. Uh, you already, we have started with no mount mode, my standby database. And then I'm gonna do this Armen target sys. I'm going to connect to my primary database from the standby server, right? So sys password and my primary database. I'm going to connect to my from the standby server, node one, I'm going to connect to my primary database with the ARMEN target. See, connected to standby database. So connected to my primary database here. And then now I'm going to connect as an auxiliary, my standby instance on whatever I started here on node one of my standby server. So which says connected to rack 12 because both the DB names are same but it is not mounted. We just started, remember, we just started instance in no mount. Right now in, in this RMN prompt, we connected to both primary as well as we connected to my standby server. So the command is here to rebuild your, build your standby. So run, you're gonna allocate four channels to your primary because it's the active database. Without backup, it's gonna connect to your my primary and then restore it on the standby side. So I'm gonna allocate four channels for my primary. I'm gonna allocate four channels for my standby. So I'm gonna look at eight channels here, four for reading my primary and then four for restoring my standby. So command is here, duplicate target database for standby from active database. Right, so this is my 
command. So this is active database duplication, ADD, active database duplication. Right, so that's a command. So I'll just gonna, after that followed by the same SP file, parameter value, what all, what all you need to configure here, right? Rack 12C production database should convert it as a rack standby. Cluster database should be false because there is no way, no option to restore it as a rack. First you have to restore it as a standalone, later you have to convert it as a rack. And DB name, DB nickname, file name convert, log file name convert, simple command, right? So I'm just gonna run this one on my standby side here. Right, so one question here, uh, why we need to set cluster database equal to false? in ADD. So whenever any rack database you are doing a clone, always you have to use cluster database equal to false. Without setting that parameter, you will not be able to do that one. Right, so parameter value convert, it's again, right? Uh, if you don't uh, do this parameter value, all will go under same location. The parameter value, can, whatever the naming convention of rack 12C has to convert it as a rack standby. Right, if you see here, uh, your uh, this one let's go here why you are going to use that parameter value cannot if you see your sp file look kind of control file location data rack standby rico rack standby if you don't use that parameter value convert you're going to restore into data rack 12c same as your production database name so if you use that parameter value cannot wherever that production database name it will replace with your standby database name so it has restored your control file here once the restore control file is done, and then it has restoring your um, data files without any backup, if you see, like without any backup, it just restored your data files here. That's a beauty of active data guard, active data guard duplication, right? Without backup, you're gonna restore your standby server. Once that is done, switch data file to copy. That's it, your standby ready, your standby is built, right? So now you need to start MRP and then start using your DR. Right, so that's a simple thing. Your active database duplication, that is your option one. Active database duplication. So just run that one. We're gonna take care of everything for you here, right? So I just captured the output here. Right, so and then we can verify your instance will be up and running here. Right, so your instance is up and running here. And then you can, uh, now I can just show you that option two. Option two is this one. Option two is like this one, using restore method, using this backup pieces. And option three is again, using Armin duplicate. I'll just cover that one in a minute. Uh, what we can do in option two here, again, you're gonna start your database in no mount, right? That's a valid one. After that, uh, remember we took this control file backup. When you're taking a control file backup here, let's go back. CD U01, U01 backup. So in this backup, we have archaeolog backup here and we have control file backup here. And then we have full database backup here and we have a standby control file backup here. And also we have SP file backup here. So this standby control file is very, very important when you are building this backup based standby build. So I also captured that one. You can just refer that one. What we're gonna do here, after copying all the backup to your standby. So you're gonna start your database in no mount, same command, same init file. And then what you're going to do, backup device type. So this is a backup of your primary side, you're gonna backup and then copy that one. So what you're gonna do here, restore control file. So you're gonna restore your control file one, control file two, using that standby control file. Very, very important. So once you start your database in no mount, and then you're gonna restore your how many control file you want, like one under data and one under Rico, you have to restore your control file first here using that backup control file, right? So that's your control file is here. So this is your standby control file. So may, with the help of that standby control file, use your own backup standby control file, you're gonna restore two control file on your standby side, one under data and one under Rico. Once the standby control file restored done, you're gonna do alter database mount standby database, right? Once that is done, you're gonna run this restore command. The channels are just whatever channels you want, you can use it. Just run this restore command. Restore control file, alter database, mount standby database, and then restore database. That's your option two, restore database. That's your option two. 
the moment you do this one, you're going to see this one here, the crystal control file under data, crystal control file under Rico. So alter, alter database mount, standby database, and then just restore command, restore database, right? So that will want to be like, again, I captured the output here. So that's a simple restore command. Standby database is ready here. So connect to database and check for that one. Your database is ready. Now option three, that's your R band duplicate database. So here, what you can do, you're going to run this one here. Uh, let's make a quick difference check here. Uh, this one here, and then this is restore. And then this is your Armen database duplication. I just gave it as a name here. Um, right, so these are the three method, uh, ADG option one, and then the restore uh, Armen restore. This is your option two. And then this is your Armen duplicate from backup. This is your option three, right? So whatever like you feel, whichever if you option you are comfortable, you can use it. Right, so here for this active database duplication, I'll make it active database duplication, right? So option one, that's active database duplication, no need of any backup, just a single command, duplicate target database for standby from active database, that's it done. So Armen restore, that's your option to just a restore command, just connect to Armen and then restore. But here, mandatory thing is you have to get standby control file and then restore standby control file. That's a very important. You have to get the standby control file from primary and then restore standby control file and then mount standby DB and then restore. That's the single, simple three commands here. So Armen duplicate here, option three, just want to run this duplicate target database for standby. Right, so that's your third option. Right, option three, duplicate target database for standby. So what you're going to do here, like Armen target, you're going to connect production database. And at the same time, you're going to connect Armen auxiliary channels, that's your standby database. You're going to run the same command, duplicate target database for standby database. So again, that's going to allocate the channels. You're going to restore your control files. And then uh, the first attempt, it failed here. Uh, when I use this, uh, uh, duplicate target for standby. And then after that, I just added, uh, this is a particular auxiliary file name. So conflict with your, the file name used by your target database. So in that case, you need to use something called no file name check. So I just included here duplicate target database. So don't worry about my file name location at all, just do a restore. So I'm just gonna include no file name check. So then your restore should go fine here. So no file name check and then your entire restore went fine. So some error messages, so those are like ignorable warnings. So that's it, like after that restore, your standby database is ready here, right? So like any of these three method, you can, whichever you are comfortable, you just use that one, right? So now we, I use the active database duplication, my standby database is ready. And then if I connect to my standby database, and then I can quickly check my database role. That should be physical standby. And then I can shut it down. And then these are your post checks. Now you are started only on instance one, and then you have to start your other instance. Like, you know, on instance two, my database is not running, instance is not running. So I need to configure that post checks that are, that are here. So I'll just shut it down my instance here. And then once the shutdown is done, I'm gonna, uh, create on the primary side, I'm going to create a P file and then copy it to my standby side. So I created on the primary side, I connected to my database and then I created my P file here on the primary side because I need to convert that rack database now. So this is my P file. I can already created this one. If I do cat, right? So these are my primary 
a p file which has all the react parameters so i need to copy that file to my target server so this is the command create a p file from sp file on the primary side and then after that you can copy that file to your target server so on the target server i already copied here i remember here right so this is a file so if i do cat so the file you can see i already renamed or replaced all my primary database name with the standby database name here and then db file file client file server and then db name and db nickname i'll already like change everything whatever needed for my standby database especially your local listener parameters here if i go on the primary side my local listeners are pointing to node 1 vip node 2 vip on the standby side when you copy that p file you have to change it to your standby vips and standby scan and all those things right so i already copied here i already modified this particular parameter files so you have to modify this parameter file according to your target standby server here right that's a very very important like you know we need to rename and we need to copy that the file you know whatever we are going to use it like on the whatever the parameters are applicable on the standby side right let's check this one here right so i already have this instance one i rename that instance one now i'm going to start my instance one using this particular rack parameter file so if you see here cluster database equal to i made it as a true here so that you know i can start two instances on the standby side right so i'm just going to use that one and i'm going to start using that a p file sql plus ssdba i'm just going to start my instance mount with that particular p file so but one thing what you need to do here right uh, before you start with this p file very interesting thing the your control file like you need to replace your control file if you see here right these are your control file names right the data rack these two control file you need to replace in that p file so i forgot to do that every time you restore your control file dynamically get generated with the uh, uh, dynamic with dynamic names so i'm just going to take these two file name here i'll go back to my restore command here these are my control file restore output right so i'll just going to take these two output now i'll go inside that and then here is a control file right so i need to replace control file with these names here very very important right so i'm just going to put single quote here comma single quote again second control file right so i'll just copy these two control files and i'm going to put it here so if it because these are like control file of your production database and once you restore your standby the standby control file names will be like different very important so you have to replace your control file along with your uh, vip scan names local listeners whatever like applicable on the target server on the standby server you have to replace all those parameters in this p file right so done save this one and now you can go ahead and then start your database right start up no mount p file start up no mount p file using that cluster modified p file so now we are going to start your standby server on the standby instance one using this modified p file and with this with the help of this modified p file i'm going to create something called sp file inside my data disk group so this is a command to create your sp file inside your data disk group right so your database is mounted i'm just going to create my sp file inside my disk group after that i'm going to exit or you can verify whether this particular file is created or not going under asm so i don't do that one because this already created it says file created and directly go ahead and shut immediate once you create this um p file here as sp file inside this group you can go to both the node 1 and then node 2 and create a init file inside dbs location point to this sp file so that's your next command if i go here like i'll go to node 1 under dbs location i'll create a init file just point to that sp file again node 2 go to dbs location create a init file just point to that sp file 
right let's exit here i'll, I'll go to my node one and then i'll just create my instance one the init file of instance one pointing to sp file this pointing to sp file cat that one has the one extra character over there extra space right so now we can do cat of that file so this init file contain pointing to that sp file same thing on the node 2 as well. Go to node 2, DBS location, EWD, you are into Oracle on DBS location. Create that instance to init file and then point to that SP file. So, cat that. It's all pointing to your SP file. That's it. So, once both the nodes are ready, you can start using your SL so it'll just I'll just verify whether my instance will get started with that SP file or not. Startup mount and node one or node two anywhere you can try to start that. Startup mount. Right, so it's mounted. You can verify show parameter SP file. It should be pointing to a disk group. Right. So by default, it is going under looking for local SP file. If you have any local SP file, go ahead and then remove them first. So this is my local SP file. So I'll just remove. I really should not start with a local SP file. So I'll just go ahead and then shut immediate. And then again, I can do startup mount. And then this time it should start with the P file. And then that P file internally pointing to my SP file, which is under this group. So if you have anything locally, locally SP file are located, just you need to go ahead and remove them. Again, one more time to start up mount. Right, so I'll just do start up mount. So this is like bad thing, right? So unnecessarily this local SP file took a highest persistency and then we started with that local SP file. Right now you can do show parameter uh, SP file, RP file. You can see it is started with my SP file, which is created inside this group. So first you're gonna look for SP file. And if the SP file is not available, it's gonna go for a init file. And then it will start with that init file, but that init file internally pointing to SP file. So the moment you do that SP file, you're gonna see that it started with the SP file. Right, so that's a simple verification method, what you can do it. And then once that is done, our job is to add my database, whatever the standby database, whatever we built, add it to cluster, the command is here. SRHTL add database, database name, and database unique name, your Oracle home, and type is rack, and then your password file, so parameter file, and then your disk groups. Right, so I'm just gonna add my standby database to my cluster where here. Right, I'm going to shut it down that again. Shut immediate. So just for validation, like whether your database is properly starting with the SP file or not, that's where you know, I just started this database in no mode. Now I'll just shut it down and then I'll add my database to cluster and then I'll start my cluster instances. Right, let's go here, add this. SLC will add database, database name, database unique name, and Oracle home type is rack, and then your SP file location and shutdown option is immediate, and group location, data and recall, your disk groups. Right, so exit, add your database to cluster, right, add it, and then now add your instance one, this is your instance one and node one, instance two and node two. Just two instances, we're going to add it. Right, so done. Both instances are added. And then now we're going to configure your database. It'll be like default pointing it as a primary here. So, database rule is primary. I'm just going to change that rule to physical standby.
and you can see it's a physical standby. So now you can see your database status, which will be like not running. And then you're gonna start your database instance in mount mode. So we're gonna start it on both the nodes because you configured both the instances. Uh, I can do it on the node to alert, locate alert underscore rack standby to dot log. So this is your rack standby log. Right, so alter database mount. Right, so it's mounted here. Just check the status. Right, so instance one, instance two running on node one and node two. Right, so once that is done, now what we can do again, verify if you want to check whether it is started with that SP file. Obviously, it should start with that SP file. Node one also it started and node two also it started. Right, so these are like output I just captured again here. And then uh, one important thing um, on the primer side, I can go ahead and then enable that log arcade destination state too, which we made it as a differ before we start with the cloning, right? So I'll just go to my primer site and SQL plus slash yes, DBA. And if I run this command here, it's gonna give me gap. So it says 165 under 164 gap is here. And then right now that state is differ because the Arca logs are not shipped. So now I'm going to enable that state here on the primer side. The moment I enable it, so automatically the R catalog will start applying over stand by side. <clears throat> so it, I can just enable it here on the primer side. The moment you enable that, and then on the on the stand by side, I can go ahead and then enable my MRP, alter database recover manage standby. I'm just going to enable on the stand by side. Just run this command. Your both instance are mounted physical standby. I'm going to enable on only node one. So I'm just going to take one duplicate session of node one. And then I can tell the alert log of the node one. Locate alert underscore rack standby one dot log. Alert. So this is here, tail hyphen F, right? So node one alert lock. Now I'm going to enable that MRF, alter database equal manage standby database disconnect from session. I'm just going to enable that MRP on the instance one, right? So it already started fetching that gap. So if I go back here and verify again the gap here, so this is my gap. Where's the gap command? Okay, here, if I run it on the primer side here, 167, 160, it was 65, now it becomes 67. Still, it is not, uh, not yet applied. All right, so let's go a few more minutes. So what we can do now, um, once you enable MRP, and now what we can do, uh, I can quickly check few things on the primary side. I'll go on the primary side and then do RK log list on node one. So this is my latest sequence here, 28152. And then I can give this command here, 28152. Or like, you know, I can just do equal to 28152. And then I can check it on the primary side. And then it says already applied on the standby side. If I go on the standby side, it's already applied here. And if I do one log switch, alter system switch log file. Right, so, and then if I do RK log list here, and then this is 28153. If I replace that 153 here, right. It says not yet applied. If I run the same query on the standby side and then not yet applied. And then if I check for my alert log, uh, it is just uh, trying to fetch up uh, the logs. I can do one more, few more logs which here. 
one, two, three. I can do a couple of blocks which here, right? And then I can check here. Grant not yet applied. Right, so it's applied here now. So if I check for next sequence number 54, right, 54 also applied. And if I check for the next sequence, 55, 55 also applied. If I check for the next sequence, 56 on the standby side, so it's not yet applied. So if I check for the same thing on the primary side, it should get that confirmation, right? So 55 is already applied. 50 and then 56, if I go with the 56. All right, so 56 is not it, oh, it's not it applied, so it will be done. So what is the latest RK log sequence number? I can run this RK log list on the primary side, uh, 57, 56 is yet to apply. I'll just wait for a few more seconds, it'll be done, not yet. Not yet, yeah. So the moment on the alert log, the moment you see anything in transit that indicates the sequences are all like sync. The the thread one, instance one, the sequence number is in transit, and thread two, sequence number is in transit, which indicates your both the primary and standby both are like up to date. And then there's a one more command, the sync command here, right? This is a sync command. You can go ahead and run this thing command on the primary side. Right, so this is your gap here. So when when we built immediately, the gap was 160 and 166. And now, now it is like just a two. So it means it's catching up. Right. So that's a simple way how we can build your uh, you know data guard using active database duplication or using your backup based duplication, right? Right, so any questions guys? So almost we extended 30 minutes. So anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute and a couple of questions we can take another five, 10 minutes. Right, so anyone has any questions? How to set the DG broker? No, that's out of scope. We'll not be covering that. Hi, yeah. Hi Malik, good evening. Yep. Yeah, so I'm beside. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, and if you, uh, I want to one session from you that we have a data guard set up, okay? Uh, one primary and one standby, I want to set up the two node racks. Uh, can we have the session on this? No, again, we'll talk that only can post it in our blog or like ping me on my WhatsApp, we'll discuss, but let's give it any other who has any questions on this today's topic. Yeah, we can okay. definitely take those sessions, yeah. You can always give it like, you know, ping me on my WhatsApp or write me an email, whatever the session you want. Definitely we can take a few sessions. Malik, I have one question yeah. not regarding yeah. this one. No, no, like just ask only questions related to this topic today, what we covered and anything apart from that, always ping me or call me on my WhatsApp or my mobile number. We'll, we'll be happy to discuss on that. But Hi, let's give uh, it to others. One question, Malik. Yeah. So... As you said, we need to give this static entry in the for the listener, right? For the standby. That is only for when you're doing active database duplication. If you're doing with the backup based, no need of static listener. Yeah, because like because like do, using the active database, we cannot have the uh, like at that time database is not up. That's why we need that static entry, right? right? That's correct. So after after configuring the standby environment, can we remove that static entry right. because that is like a security concern, right? Right, right. You can go ahead and remove that. Yeah, you can go ahead and change. So it's that. not gonna impact the standby environment. No, no. Okay. Instead of using the static entry, like I have gone through once, like I was doing the setup for the standby, I have used an entry which is UA equal to R something. Oh, that is oh UA equal to R is something. So even I cannot remember now. Uh, especially for rack, we're going to do that, but that's not a mandatory thing. If you hit that bug and if you that issue, then you can set it. Otherwise that's not a mandatory. Because while we were doing that, we were not able to uh, handle the, uh, like we were not able to do the active database duplication, even though we have given the static entry in the, in the, in the probably you might have started connecting via scan. That's where no, we need to set that UA equal to So we're not using the scan here. Like we're using the local connection here. 
okay okay local like if you see my duplicate database command where is that one i'm using node one so that you know i no need to worry about that ua equal to s where is that where is that one here Mm, yeah, go ahead and the next question if anyone has it. Like, we're going to connect with the. He's not an active database. Yes, Malik. Uh, I... Yeah. Hi, Halim. Uh, yeah. Uh, as we said, log archive dash two in case of physical standby, right? Uh, and uh, what if uh, we want to uh, set both physical and logical standby? What parameters we need to set? It, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, if you talk about your standby database, you have. Uh, uh, physical standby logical snap standby and then you know snapshot standby so whatever mm -hmm. this case is you're going to set that uh, both the parameters your db file name convert and log file name convert and then you know these parameters are mandatory whatever database you whatever the way you configure these are the type of yeah. standby database right you have to manage yeah like we we, uh, we set here uh, logger archive underscore dash underscore two so uh, this was in case of only one uh, standby if we want to set another standby then uh, we need to set underscore three underscore four like that right that's correct we have okay. totally and 32 uh, destination okay Okay, so uh, like we have cascading st standby server also, na? if we use that, then uh, that all uh, standby servers will be uh, pointing to the primary database only. Right, that's correct. Okay. There's a one, one option more... cascade like you know, standby on top of standby, but again, that's a totally different concept. You can still configure standby for your standby from your standby. That's a totally different okay. concept. But coming to pure basic standby understanding, so all, all your standby should point to your primary database. Okay. And uh, as a DBA, like what should be the daily checks to check if uh, physical and logical standby is running fine or not? No, like it be one, either of one, either physical or logical standby. What type of configuration you have done it, whether it's a physical standby or logical standby or snapshot standby. So we need to make sure that sync is going through fine. And you have enough space between my FRA, my archive destination, and we have enough bandwidth between both the primary side and standby side. And then my password file is working fine and TNS files are working fine. My scan listeners are working fine. So then you won't, you won't face any issues. These are like basic checks you have to do it. Okay, and uh, how we how we can check the bandwidth, like uh, you said? That's the uh, network bandwidth. You can use the IPERF or you can use a TNS ping. And the moment you do TNS ping from the primary to standby, you should pretty much get your response in millisecond. If I do TNS ping, I, I'm at my primary side. If I do TNS ping and then my rack standby, sorry, TNS ping rack standby. So I should oh, type. TNS ping, uh, I should get in like zero millisecond or one, two, three, five. Like if you're getting like hundred millisecond or like if you're getting like fifty millisecond, that's a the the network throttle between both primary and standby is not good. And this is a simplest right. check you can do. Okay, okay, thanks, Malik. All right. Good evening, sir. Yep. Uh, sir, uh, I have one question. Like. Uh, we have configured here rack to rack uh, data guard configuration, right? Right. So in the long run, uh, is there any possibility like uh, there is some like junior DBAs, they have changed this uh, parameters or as you said, like uh, the password file, whether it's present or not, or like the, uh, like whatever uh, necessary configurations we have made. Since this is a rack database, we have multiple nodes. So if mm -hmm. there is a mismatch in all these configurations in a particular side, like in standby or mostly in the standby, so it will go out of sync, right? Right. So those like individual nodes, we uh, need to check whether uh, the parameters, all the or the uh, files, whether those are present or not, or those are uh, same no, we, or not. We no need to worry anything. Like you know, whatever the parameter I set it here, right? Hardly how many like four or five parameters. Right, right, Just right. check on the primary side. If all are fine, then everything will be like good. Like if your if your sync is not happening, if it's a MRP is not applying, then you get to check your database alert log. 
mm-hmm. and then take a nature action like if i go here where are my no, suppose uh, uh, if i take this uh, log archive uh, destination 2 parameter mm-hmm. if that is uh, different in two, both the nodes in the standby or in the primary that that will again uh, you know it it will stop the log shipping right 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 uh-huh that's correct so to verify that and then set it back right same with the fail uh, client or uh, fail server or right. you know whatever parameter right right okay. right yeah oh one more thing uh, we have used here active uh, database duplicate right right yeah that is like with that process we don't need to take separate backups and that right. need, need not to be transferred uh, separately that right. we do in uh, yeah so uh, how how uh, that particular active database duplicate is work can you please uh, no that's a block to block copy right like you know we allocate four channels for my primary four channels for my standby mm-hmm. we're going to read directly my data files blocks and then directly restore it on the standby side like block to block copy so no okay. need to have any backups okay okay yeah Malik, uh, uh, Malik, one more question. Uh, like uh, when we started the database, uh, right? We uh, started from the P file and uh, uh, opened it in no mount mode. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, that was uh, when when we uh, you fired the query, it was showing started. Uh, right. But uh, the instance was in uh, no mount mode. Then how it was showing that start is uh, started. Again, okay, that's a, that's a basic, right? Like you know, you have a no mount. Sorry, uh, it's a your shutdown. Again, that's a basic yes. architecture: right? shutdown, and then no mount, and then mount, and then open. So when you query V dollar yes. database versus V dollar instance, right? V dollar database versus V dollar instance. So you are shut down, and then no mount in that whatever in the V dollar database. This will be no mount. and then we data no it will be will be started we data database will say that no mount and we data instance will say that started and then in mount mode we data database will say mount mode we data instance will say mount mode and in open state we data database will say read and write read and, and write the instance will say open so these are like equivalent to each other which query you are going to fire we data instance okay. versus we data database okay thanks thanks sir yeah malik one question uh, like in primary we have mentioned db file uh, convert and log uh, file convert right right uh, while doing active duplication we have mentioned parameter value convert is right. it mandatory if, uh, if we mention db file convert and log that's file? mandatory i'll tell you why because the db file name convert and log file name convert the name itself suggest it will only convert db file name and log file name apart from that whatever it is like your sp file or your control file or whatever the parameter which is pointing to production all will get converted if you use that parameter value convert that's a mandatory to use that one if you don't use that one your control file will default restore it back to uh, you know uh, data and then your production database name it will not go with the standby database name directory that's that's mandatory one thanks malik malik uh, here rajnish uh, here we are setting only one node only right uh, while uh, always your parameter. rack uh, cloning your armen clone armen duplication armen restore record whatever you do we first do it on only node one later we can convert it as a rack uh, like uh, while using only srv ctl uh, only right or uh, yeah. we need to only srv ctl because underlying database or data files are all under shared storage we're going to add the instances if you have like one more instance we can add third instance first we are restore it in a single node but underlying data files will restore it on the shared storage here and you can add n number of instances that's it so comes under conversion or only adding only adding okay that's your post steps conversion is different right the conversion is totally different that okay. so was our post steps what we are doing it here Right. These are your post checks here. These are your adding whatever the restore database as the rag database. These are the command. You can add one more instance with a third node if you have it. If we can add one more instance, 
that also we just uh, add the service uh, whatever the we have done in uh, uh, these right, great same thing you are going to add it here right here only okay yeah that you should have third instance third grid instance before you adding okay. the third instance all right guys okay thanks malik uh, malik uh, are you going to uh, like upload this uh, uh, video and document to the google drive i will share everyone in the in the group you can just access over there okay thank you so much sir all right guys thank you all uh, thanks for the class thank, thank you, you sir thank you boss